Hello ladies and gentlemen, today is May 8th, 2011. Um, I am Sailorfish and you're watching Overgrowth Weekly number 21. And with me today I have... Oh damn, I already forgot your nickname. Let's see, <laughs> scroll down. <laughs> Turbo Chop. <laughs> Hi Turbo Chop. Hey guys. Hey guys, what's going on? Um, so just to int introduce you so everyone knows kind of who you are. We're going to have like a brief interview later, but... Uh, can you just briefly tell us who you are in the community? <laughs> um, I am Turbo. My name is Turbo Chop. Uh, in you know, in the forums, I am known on, on in the forums as Turbo Chop thirty three hundred. I've been kind of a lurker and um, keeping keeping up with the progress of overgrowth. And I haven't really, never really posted a whole lot because I kind of want to keep quiet until things get really you know up and working. But I've contributed a few things and uh, Silverfish said that he would like it's okay that if people go on to a show you know anybody so i was like oh hey what do i got to lose <laughs> yeah absolutely and i'm sure it'll be a great show today with lots of community stuff we have like four maps this week uh, with one of the, those maps being an updated map and two mods with one of those mods being an updated mod so lots of new stuff though we don't have any tweets or news sad face but I think this community stuff makes up for that by far. Definitely, it was a very, uh, very active community this week. Mm -hmm. But before we get into the community stuff, we're going to take a look at the latest alpha and what's new inside of that. So here we have uh, the change log for the alpha. I'm just going to go through every um, point in this alpha and uh, tell you guys uh, more about them, if there is more to tell about them, of course. <laughs> okay, material weapon impact sounds. This is more impact sounds for different materials when the weapons land on them. It's pretty simple. And then we have distant weapon impacts have low pass and delay. So uh, this is when you know sound doesn't travel instantly. It doesn't travel at the speed of light, it travels at the speed of sound, weirdly. Um, so it doesn't reach your ears instantly, so if you see something fall on the ground very far away now, it'll take a while before you can hear it inside of your ears. And all we need now is a Doppler effect. Hint, yeah. Hint, nudge, nudge. I was thinking about that as well, like a Doppler. I mean, yeah. I don't know how this works, so it's kind of weird to think about the Doppler. I don't even know how Doppler works, but... You know, it's awesome stuff. Guys. <laughs> and low pass. Do you know what a low pass filter does to sound? Uh, it pretty much it isolates all the higher sounds and makes it so you can only hear lower ones, right? Mm, like yeah, lower that makes sense. Lower frequency. Mm. I, I believe. I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> not very uh, tech savvy, so I'm, that's my interpretation of it. <laughs> mm, Tonjevic in the chat says there already is a Doppler effect, and uh, if that's the case, then awesome, I guess. Um, okay, sharpness map for cat weapons and old sword. This is uh, that um, the weapons now. Uh, we're going to go into this more. I'm going to show it in the game. But basically, this is that the weapons in the game. Uh, you can decide what part of it is supposed to be sharp by changing a texture map for the weapon, which is very, very cool. A very, very cool solution. So it's, it's a very interesting approach to. Uh, sharpness of a weapon, and not many, not many other games actually implement any kind of you know weapon sticking in the ground. So that's another another point for Wolfire, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, I mean, uh, any other game developer would just take take the weapon and uh, they would make the uh, the characters throw it, and no matter how the weapon ended up, if it ended up with the uh, hilt first, or what it's called, no, not the hilt, the handle first, is that right? You had it right. Yeah, if it ends up with a handle first into someone, it would just switch around and uh, say that, oh no, I didn't hit with the handle, no, I hit with the sharp part, like this. But Wolfire, uh, being awesome as usual, they come up with the most, ba were basically the most logical and uh, um, just the most intuitive solution uh, to the uh, problem, which they are known to do. All their solutions are very, very awesome. Indeed, uh, they, uh, David, and the rest of the Wolfire team definitely put a lot of lot of thought into their work, and they put a lot of polish into it. Even even in these uh, early stages, it's very impressive to see what they come up with each week. It's like an addiction. You have to like, I wonder what they're going to come up with in this week, uh, in this Overgrowth Alpha. Yeah, it's totally. gonna be so cool. It's gonna be so cool. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so together with this, they have the, that weapon stick if they land on the sharp part as well. If they land on like wood or dirt or whatever. Uh, and then they have a weapon sparkle locator. Mm, that is that the weapons have a little sparkle in the, in the engine. Mm, so let me show you those two right now. Let me get into the game here. Load up a weapon. Just click the add item. You can also click the load item button up there if you want to load items. I think this menu, this flo- floating menu here, will actually be gone uh, in the final game. So you should probably get used to using these buttons up here. Okay, but let's find a weapon. Okay, so the working weapons are only these ones. The cat gauge, gauch, gauch. The uh, gauch, I think. Gauch. I'm not sure how to pronounce it either. Uh. <laughs> Gauch, 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 okay. Cat gauch, cat rapier, rapier. The rapier, I think it's the, I think it's the gauch, the rapier, and either the the glaive or the spear. I can't remember which one it is. Um, it's the bastard sword, I think. So these three weapons will work, and I'm going to do it with the gauch. Okay, so firstly we have the weapon sparkle. I'm gonna go around, go away here, and you'll see that the weapon sparkles. Let me go into play mode. Jump away. Ding. Sparkle. <laughs> sparkle. Okay, awesome. So that's the sparkle. And then, if you hold the weapon, I think it should be able to land on this ground. You should be able to just. Ah, there we go. <laughs> So this is the easiest way to throw the weapon into the ground. You just stand still and then you walk forward and let go of it. And it'll stick. See how awesome that is. I can't even do that in real life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. It's, it's, uh, it's really cool how they just think of features like... Oh, that was a bad, that was a bad throw. But it's cool how they think of features like that. It's just, it's just interesting how they come up with like, Hey, this sword, this needs to be you know, realistic. Maybe they can add it to gameplay, whereas... Um, if a if a you know, enemy drops a knife or whatever, instead of you know rolling away and getting where you can't reach it, just stick in the ground, and you get to pick it up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just super awesome uh, the way they're they're like setting everything up to be emergent. I'm um, like, imagine how cool that would be if you like throw your weapon and then you miss your target and it like hit, it like hits a stone wall behind your target, and uh, then it like flips away and then it gets stuck in the ground just because it landed like that. Like something like that would make you feel like totally badass, like you were in the most awesome movie in history, even though you just missed your enemy with your weapon. You like feel totally awesome, and that's how it should be in a video game. <laughs> Well, I know if I was just standing there, you know, standing guard at a town, and all of a sudden I saw a knife go right in the side, right inside the wall, just stick there. Yeah. I think I'd be freaking out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, my browser is like not loading its content. Come on, little browser, come on, let's scroll. <laughs> well, that was weird. Okay, um, let's see where were we? Weapons reset when levels reset. Yeah, that's not very exciting. Uh, fixed items disappearing at level load, just nice um, fix. I mean, I know this was very weird because people were adding weapons to their levels, and then when they were loaded the levels up again afterwards, the items were there but they were invisible. And I think that's this bug being fixed. Fixed sudden whoosh when picking up weapons, also pretty easy to understand. Fix auto undo of first action in empty levels. Yeah, I remember this one. This is one is weird. Like, if you have an empty level and you're like, um, I want to add a blocker. So you go uh, add, um, go like a load item, you pick your block, and then you click on the ground. And then you're like, nothing happens. But no, it did happen. But with that bug, nothing happens. And they're like, okay, I guess I try again. And then it, ha- and then it just works for some reason. And you're like, why didn't it work the first time? That's just one of those weird alpha things that, you know, you have to get used to. I'm sure there are a bunch of other things like that in the game already. <laughs> I'm a bad alpha tester. I didn't even notice that whole uh, un- auto-undo thing, because I spent more time just, you know, rolling around bleeding everywhere. <laughs> 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 I just can't get over that. It's just, that's an awesome uh, effect that they've added. And I, I've said it before, and I'll say it, again, say it again. I'm really looking forward to what they add next. Yeah. <laughs> See, that was a pretty cool thing I did right there, in slow motion and everything. So it bounced on the ground once, and then... 
and then it stuck in the ground. Yeah, it didn't stick into the ground because it hit the handle. Yeah, the first That's time, and then it, and then it lands on the sharp part, and then it sticks. <laughs> this is just so sweet. <laughs> it's just it's it's a level of uh, interactivity that you don't get, and uh, you know there's the fact that it's actually scripted where it, like there's a specified spot on the knife where it's supposed to stick. Uh, we've been over this enough. I won't repeat myself. Uh, yeah. Uh, but another thing with this, I, I want to actually <laughs> talk about it more. Knives, I love these knives, and they're sticking. <laughs> okay, that is that instead of just relying on on chance in this game, it will be like real chance, depending on how the weapon looks. You know, it will stick in the right areas. But as I said, we probably talked about this too much already, <laughs> so let's move on. Uh, that's it for this week's alpha, at least. Let's move on to the art asset overview. Art asset overview number thirteen this week. Um, so I'm going to play this video for you guys, and um, then afterwards we're, we'll come back and uh, we're going to comment on it and talk about it a bit. So um, you'll need to be quiet for now, uh, Mr. Turbo Chop, uh, while <laughs> yes, the sir. thing is running. Actually, I'm going to uh, deafen myself, sorry about that. So you can talk all you want, but I won't be able to hear you. <laughs> so enjoy the video, guys. Uh, see you in a bit. Welcome to the Overgrowth Art Asset Overview. This week I'm going to be showing an early prototype for blocking out the gameplay of the arena, and also some paint overs to show some of the ideas I had. Like, for example, on the entryway here, I was thinking of having some relief sculpture. Obviously one important thing for the arena is that when you're inside you shouldn't be able to jump out. I wasn't sure about the scale until I actually put it in the game engine here to get a look at it. Here I did a paint over to test out some ideas for the colors. I'm not totally sure that I'll use this blue and red accent colors, but uh, this was my first idea. I might go with blue and green instead, I'm not sure. I think it would be cool to have little modular platforms and walls that could be set up inside the arena for different types of fights. And finally, here are some work in progress versions of some of the assets that I'll need to finish the arena. They are one roof piece, one small staircase and two umbrella variations. That's it for this week's Overgrowth Art Asset Overview. Don't forget you can pre-order Overgrowth at wolfire.com slash pre-order. Thanks. And we're back. So, Art Asset Overview for this week. Okay, I'm going to do a new thing here where uh, I'm going to play the video without, without sound and then I'm going to pause it in... Uh, the uh, correct locations. So this is going to be awesome. Check this out. <laughs> okay, so firstly, um, he shows... Um, uh, yeah, he basically says that this is a mapping technique called a white boxing, where he... Um, actually, let me pause it right there. Uh, where you, like, just instead of working with textures and stuff, because that takes extra time, you just uh, box everything out pretty quickly with the uh, simple stuff, just to make sure you get everything right before you put, out, put in a lot of work for it. It's a, it's a very interesting technique, and um, I remember when I was going over the development of Unreal Tournament uh, 3, they, they used the same idea to build their levels, where they built, they made the basic, you know, building blocks and got all the gameplay centered, they got all the gameplay working right, and then they built all the art and you know, decorated it afterward. Yeah, it's an interesting approach, and it worked really well. Yeah, it's um, it's very good since, after all, the gameplay is the most important aspect. So, it makes sense to work on the gameplay first. And uh, right here, he, you can see that he shows the. Uh, uh, it's like a paint over right here, I assume, because it's not there when he's running. Um, some kind of relief stuff, art thingies that he wanted to put on the arena. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so let's play this again and get further along. Okay, so he jumps in here. He shows how it looks on the inside. And I have to say, it looks pretty cool. He's uh, talking about the scale of the level right here. And um, 
how he wasn't sure if it would be right because you don't want to be able to jump out of the level of course that would be kind of weird if you're in a fight and just jump away coward <laughs> coward yeah i guess that should be a, an option if you want to be a coward i mean why not <laughs> and right here he's showing a, a paint over he did for the colors so some kind of yeah what colors he's imagining everything would have uh, right here there is red and blue and uh, this right now I am not sure I kinda like this actually I'm not sure I like this the, there's not, there's gonna be more work going into it later and uh, I think I know what you mean uh, maybe are you talking about the color scheme yeah about the color scheme uh, red and blue I mean they go like they go together really well but maybe that's the problem maybe there needs to be some more um, maybe different colors that people don't usually see together, or something, or maybe different. Uh, maybe one color to represent one faction, another color to represent another faction. There's actually quite a bit of um, talk on the comments about this, and they brought up a lot of interesting points about the color scheme. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just that I'm missing more colors because uh, right now everything is gray except for like the roofs and the uh, umbrella thingies. So perhaps I'm just missing having more colors on the walls or something, I don't know. Either, uh, co oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, you. I was uh, thinking just either, you know, just different colors or more release on the inside walls or, heck, even, you know, since it's an arena, blood splatters, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'd be adding stuff like that as well, of course. Wait. It's a uh, very... I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead again. I wasn't going to say anything important. <laughs> I, was just, I was just saying, uh, I was uh, impressed, actually impressed by the scale of it. And uh, it, it seems like it's actually a really good size. It kind of it makes me wonder what they have in store for overgrowth and you know where this uh, arena ties in. Yeah, um, people have been discussing that as well. And I think this arena could be like a very central piece in the entire overgrowth game really because I uh, imagine they could have for example have single player challenges where you're like okay you need to kill like three rabbits at the same time or you need to kill like a cat a dog and a rabbit after one another you know stuff like that you could do like team battles etc and uh, it could be part of the story as well perhaps you're being I don't know captured and like and you need to fight like a gladiator or whatever and then they, if they have a uh, cooperate to cooperative stuff you could just play survival with your friends see how long I can manage to fight off wolves or whatever it def definitely sounds like uh, it's, it has a lot of uh, potential and I'm looking forward to see what they do with it yeah same here same here uh, and right here you can see a little Another paint over he did showing that he wants, and he's kind of talking about that he wants to add um, perhaps modular assets to this. So, right here you can see there are like some few platforms and walls scattered around to make the combat a bit more dynamic, I guess. And I like this as well. Perhaps even, perhaps they could even add uh, some kind of randomized uh, arenas for this. But they just randomly place uh, X number of objects on the level to make it more re to give it more replay value or something. Yeah, um, I was, um, actually, no, no, go ahead. I was just, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I guess we'll see. That would be cool, though. Mm, yeah, <laughs> we'll see about that. It doesn't feel like it would be too important to the game, really. Uh, what I was thinking was that with the arena, if it, if it would be like the challenges in Lugaru, maybe the, the, the arena could tie in like that, where... You know, you had like a certain a set like challenge one through thirteen that involves maybe getting from point A to point B in the obstacle course set up in the arena, or fighting so many monsters, or excuse me, uh, rabbits or wolves or rats or whatever. And uh, um, yeah, I I just really look forward to seeing. You, you never can guess with you know with uh, uh, infant technology or infant uh, assets like this. So yeah. I really look forward to see what they do. Yeah, and uh, the developers always come up with something more, far more awesome than <laughs> than you do expect most of the time. <laughs> just when you know, just when you think you're coming up with some kind of pattern that you think that they're following, they throw you a curveball. Yeah, and that's <laughs> an awesome <laughs> curveball. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. <laughs> I agree. That's, that's what makes uh, you know going over to the alphas every Monday so addictive. It's like it's like a ritual every Monday. Yeah. What are they going to add this week? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And uh, right here, I moved on in the video, in the video, not the video. Uh, and here he's shown <laughs> some of the assets he is created, and uh, that he needs to texture, of course. And it's a staircase, a like wall walking thingy, and two umbrellas, a broken umbrella and a not broken umbrella. <laughs> a broken umbrella. I like. I wonder what happened way up in the stands. If I don't know, maybe there was a. A rogue spear that went that got when it went flying or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, just a random random thought. I, I like how Aubrey's art likes like that. It makes you kind of think. Like, what 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 happened here? Mm. What what happened with this umbrella? What's what's going on with these structures? Yeah, and that's what uh, that's what's so uh, I don't know awesome about I mean uh, about making a video game and actually thinking about it because everything in a video game should have a story behind it. That makes it much more just believable in general. So, hopefully he's, like, put thought, put thought in about that, like, uh, probably some spares have gone in the wrong direction or whatever and uh, destroyed something. And I think that's, you know, awesome of him to, to think like that. Yeah, it's, uh, he puts a lot of thought into his assets, and um, I'm fully confident that he'll, uh, that everything that he wants will, in the game will serve a, a good purpose. And, uh... <laughs> Uh, he seems to be he seems to be a really good modeler, so yeah. I, ha I have no uh, have no worries. So <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> indeed, and uh, now we have come to the point where we are going to have a little brief interview with uh, you because we're moving out of the weekly alpha segment and into the community segment. Okay, so I'm just going to ask a few basic questions so we can get to know you, and uh, then we're going to move on with the show. Alrighty. Okay, so first off, like, where are you from? How old are you? And um, you know, what do you do? <laughs> um, uh, my name is uh, Leonard Kaberski. I'm 22 years old. I live in uh, I live in Iowa, <laughs> and um, I, I don't I don't really do much. I'm a I'm a bookbinder at a company called R.R. Donnelly. <laughs> There's not really much to tell. <laughs> hmm. I um. I just I got interested in Nugaru a while ago and kind of followed with Overgrowth ever since and that's where I, that's kind of how I become became a fan of Wolffire and uh, yeah and like <laughs> the road that a lot of us have taken to to get here so like uh, you said you have done some uh, levels or something like that for uh, the game. <laughs> I uh, I dabbled in the level creation just a little bit. I I, I made this one tower, uh, one uh, one one add-on for a level, I guess you could say. It was I called it the the Gale. What it was, it was it was a homage to Unreal Tournament 2004, which there was a map called the Gale, and the the main centerpiece was a giant pit with I beams going across it that you could fall down and bounce off of in ragdoll form. To me, I thought it was really entertaining, <laughs> and uh, so I, I remade I made a version of it in Overgrowth, and yeah, I posted I, it on the forums. <laughs> yeah, that was from you got inspired by Unreal Tournament two thousand and four, right? From that. Yes, that's correct. And I have to agree, like ragdolls and stuff, and physics in general, to me, that was like so awesome when it came. I remember Half Life Two. I would just like play around with the barrels. Like, look at that! Look at that barrel! See how it like falls, like realistically, and then we the ragdolls and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, physics in general. I love it. You know, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I I absolutely love ragdoll physics. I don't know why. It's it's just fun. And uh, I remember when I first got the Half Life Two demo, I I spent a good most well, I spent a lot of time just spawning NPCs up on a really narrow ledge and just shooting and watching them fall. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I just really like ragdoll physics. It's it's cool. It's better than the canned animations, and uh, you, it's more natural. It's it's cool stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> okay, so uh, as a last question, um, um, this is a question that I ask everyone on the show as a last question. If you were uh, part of the Overgrowth universe, what uh, uh, kind of animal would you be and what would you be doing? Well, quite frankly, I'd want to I'd want to be uh, maybe a, a, a rabbit mercenary that I don't know, either gets either is tasked to hunt down Turner or maybe joins Turner's side and decides to help him. Uh, Turner is a really interesting character. He has a really loaded uh, really loaded backstory that's that's ex that's explained in the first Lugaru, and I, it'd be great to actually get to know this this guy. You know, if I just met him and and he told me his backstory, I'd be like, "Damn, I feel sorry for your plight." Yeah, that's really screwed up. I'm gonna I'm gonna help you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
I'd be a be a you know like a rabbit mercenary. Awesome. <laughs> Can't so. think of a name, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you not very good to. at names. <laughs> <laughs> I think Turbo Shop would be kind of weird, or or maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> they call me they call me Turbo Chop. You see those ninjas over there? No, you don't see them because they're ninjas. That's, that's also because I killed them already with my sword. Yeah, <laughs> chop them up, Turbo quickly, I guess. <laughs> okay, awesome. Thanks what? for has, uh, answering my questions, man. Thanks for the interview. Oh no problem, man. It's a it's an honor. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet. Okay, let's move on then. All right. Um, so le next up, we have the fan art watch, where we take a look at the latest fan art for Evergoth. Uh, we just go into Wolfire Games forum, go into the Wolfire part of the forums, and into the fan art thread, which is currently at f 49 pages. You, so you should check it out if you haven't already. <laughs> a lot of interesting fan art here, uh, especially this uh, new one they, that uh, uh, Resin just posted, with uh, a rat on a giant hawk, while Turner is. Probably trying, you know, to defeat him and take down the hawk and kill the rat. It's really well drawn. Oh. And, uh, kudos to Resin. Yeah, um, this it, is like th that was actually the first uh, fan art that was posted in the fan art thread in, in back in <laughs> 2008. So that's a long time ago, man. I'd actually just seen it. I'd never seen this before. <laughs> so yeah, you should <laughs> check you through all the pages. There's lots of awesome stuff there. <laughs> but right now we're actually on page 48, I think. Yeah, 48. Um, and uh, the last, uh, or the first things to show off this week are uh, two pieces by um, Luguru fan. So first up, we have a, a drawing that he has been. Oh, that was huge! Awesome, that he drew with uh, what's it called? Pencils, pencil and, and color pencil. Pencil. Yeah. Yeah, colored pencil. And uh, it's looking kind of cartoony. Mm, I'm not sure what to say about this really. I mean, it's. Hmm, kind of weird. But it's looking yeah, it's cool. Not bad. Yeah, it's not bad, it's cool, but kind of weird, not, not a style you see see often. And, um, yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> and he has another one here, uh, which is uh, a bit more awesome. Um, I actually answered him. Uh, I wrote an answer to, to this. <laughs> Tundervik says, oh, "I if can think of anything nice to say. Yeah, I think it's a nice picture. It's just that it's a, it's. A, I mean, he obviously isn't very skilled right now, so I'm not sure. But I did uh, actually answer him and tell him how I think that he can improve better because he posted this other picture as well, and this shows that he can actually draw very well because he draw this uh, on freehand. Uh, I'm pretty sure about that. But he did use one of Arbis concept arts as a reference when he did this. And uh, if you w look at it, you see that the um, that the uh, anatomy anatomy yeah is much better yeah. than on the other picture. Uh, much less cartoon and much more awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it looks really good. And now, uh, who better to reference than Aubrey himself? You know, yeah. to take one of his drawings and you know, get some stuff from it and. And see what you can learn from it, and uh, this is it's definitely a. It's the, the first one is good, but the second one is definitely an improvement on the style. And I can he did a good job. Kudos to him. Yeah, it's uh, it's really cool. And uh, I, um, what I basically wrote to him is that uh, I think that he should draw from uh, references more, which is something I think most artists uh, should do when they are learning, because it's just that's how you learn how to draw something. If you're like if you just draw a hand, that's you draw and you draw from your mind. That's not how a hand actually looks. Like that might be how a hand looks from like an angle in your mind, but your mind is like screwed up. Of course, you need to look <laughs> at a hand and draw what you see, and not like think about it too much. And that's how you learn how to draw these more advanced, uh, you know, anatomical shapes or whatever to make everything look more real. So I think he'll be able to progress and become a very nice artist, artist if he just keeps keeps at it. Uh, definitely, he's definitely showing improvement, uh, really good improvement so far. And uh, if you if you have any more fan art, post it, man. I like your work so far. Yeah, really, you know, keep sweet. it up. And uh, then we have Erkin, Erkin. I don't know, Erkin, I guess. Erkin, uh, yeah. Making this. Uh, piece of art here of a rabbit being uh, bitten by a wolf in mid-air and this one is very very cool it has lots of you know motion in it and um, yeah just really really awesome <laughs> piece of art yeah that rabbit looks screwed if there if that's Turner there is not going to be an overgrowth 
yeah. <laughs> totally. But yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I think so too. He, he does look <laughs> kind of like Turner also, so I'm getting kind of yeah. worried. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting kind of worried. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Turner. Yeah, he'll he'll just brush it off. He's he's tough. Yeah, I guess so. But on the other <laughs> hand, you can always be one hit in uh, in these games by wolves. So. Oh, yeah, I know that. That's I know that way too well. Yeah, we all do. Sniffle, sniffle. <laughs> but yeah, this so, is really awesome. Really nice style. Uh, really defined. Easy to see what's going on, and uh, really a lot of motion in it. So yeah, I like it. Awesome. Really nice and clean. I like the clean lines on it. It's really well drawn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next we have uh, menace with a three instead of an e, so I guess m m three ness, m three ness, menace, m three ness, m three ness, yeah, <laughs> something like that. And apparently menace likes frogs, m three ness, m three ness likes frogs. So he has drawn a frog with a kind of mace, I guess. Yeah, frog with mace. On top on in a, on a rock. I hope this is water because it could be clouds as well. But I don't think he's above the clouds. That would be kind of weird. But, <laughs> but this one is looking actually kind of cool. It does, it does look pretty good. It's um you know we we only have uh, rats, cats, wolves, rabbits, and dogs. But um with the you, you added you know a frog and it seems like it, it fit it would fit perfectly in the overgrowth universe. Yeah. And, um, I mean, there are a lot of people who like different animals. People are, like, obsessed with certain animals. I mean, one guy is making, like, a uh, uh, turtle, etc., and people are making, like, foxes, etc., etc. So I'm sure we'll be seeing lots of different races in the game later, uh, in, like, in the community. Hopefully we, don't, hopefully we don't see too many whales. <laughs> yeah, I think we will see a whale race. That's the first thing we will see, I think. <laughs> And then we have this kind of uh, uh, comic strip kind of image. It looks like it's it's an art style based on the comics that Aubrey has been releasing. Uh, almost, it seems like almost the exact same uh, style. Which is, I like the comics, and uh, he did a really good job of replicating that. Yeah, and, and it's uh, looking just really, really nice in general. I hope he um, hope he expands on it and. Maybe, uh, maybe if he catches the attention of Aubrey, he could uh, help him work on the on the storyboards. Yeah, because so he, he definitely has Aubrey's style matched. It looks really good, and I like it. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm this guy should probably start working on his own Argoth comic. That would be sweet. That would be cool. <laughs> something you know, I like a separate universe. So. You know, you have something else. To, you have something new to read besides you know learning about the backstory of the actual Overgrowth story. We have you know Overgrowth Gaiden with, with the frog. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like you can make a lot of stuff with this universe. Yeah. But yeah, sweet stuff. And then we have another one made by Menace. Yeah, that's his name, Menace. <laughs> this one is. I'm not sure what this is. Let me open this in a new tab. It's a frog it's like sitting a on his knees or something. It's like a, it looks like he's like either meditating or, or uh, praying or something. That's what I would guess. It's what, it's what it looks like to me. Uh, it seems like he's a uh, you know, he's going for a different, slightly different art style here. It looks almost like uh, like that old an old Japanese style. Yeah. If you look at the pants and the textures and stuff on that, like that. True. It's I like how uh, all three of these drawings are all different. It's like he's trying different ideas and. Um, it's, uh, I, I look forward to seeing what uh, he sticks with and what he gets what he gets out of these drawings. Yeah, absolutely. I I think this is actually doesn't I've seen this in, in movies I think where they when they're like meeting kings or whatever they just sit on their knees and straight backs and their hands on their knees or something like that so that they can you know bow whenever they want to or something. I don't know. But whatever, it's a really really nice drawing. I like the style as you said and. Uh, the way that he changes styles with every drawing, I mean, he he's very skilled, it seems like, since he does have all these different styles he can just switch between. So, really nice work by Menace. Yeah, very nice work, Menace. Uh, if you have, <laughs> let's like the other guy, if you have any, more, if you have any new drawings, uh, you know, show them, show them to us. We always look forward to seeing new content. Absolutely. Especially, you know, it, it's, like I said, you have really good stuff here, and I like it, I really do. Indeed, indeed. 
And he cannot only draw this menace guy, he can also make 3D models apparently, so he's been modeling that frog that we hope he's going to put into the game. So that's very sweet. It's looking great. I mean, I can't do this. I would never be able to, or maybe I would be able to, but it would take a long, long time. I wonder how long this took for him to do. I'm not going to make any guesses. Yeah. I have no idea of his experience, and I'm not experienced with modeling myself, so um, it, it does look really good, and there's a lot of details put into it. And uh, it's kind of, it kind of looks like the same interface as um, when we were uh, discussing before the show, uh, the sculptress. But yeah. I know it's probably not, but it it looks really good. And I um, it's, I hope to I excuse me. I look forward to seeing what, what he adds to it, as far as like modular assets, like clothes and stuff, and uh, you know how he textures it and. Absolutely. So far, it's, it's a solid-looking model. And Some people were um, talking about the legs, that they think the legs are too short and the frogs have much longer legs compared to their bodies, which is true. But uh, I'm not sure how that would work since, since they are supposed to be bipedal. Um, they're supposed to have two legs and walk on two legs. It would be kind of weird if they had frog legs that they're supposed to walk on or something. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it I'm sorry, go ahead, my bad. Yeah, I just don't know how, how that would work. D though I do want him to add frog feet to this guy, absolutely. That would be sweet. Yeah, like little, uh, like, webbed feet. Yeah, <laughs> like flipper feet. <laughs> uh, to answer your, your concerns about the legs, um, it's probably, you know, like all the other characters in Overgrowth, they're trying to, you know, make them... Um, I'm not even going to try to save the word. Uh, when you try to make animals, and you know, human-like, <laughs> anthropomorphize, there we go, that's the word. Yeah. Anthrop Anthropomorphic <laughs> or something. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it'd probably look weird if his legs were really long. So some, some, uh, it's kind of a mixture from human and animal. And I, it's got a good balance here. And I agree with you that, they, that he should add uh, frog-like feet. Like, uh, you know, a human-like body and legs, but maybe frog-like peripherals and a face, definitely, which he's got that already. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> really good. It's looking sweet. I hope you put this p character in the game later, so we can play it. It would be awesome. If you don't put it in the game, the whale will get the whale man will get you. Yeah, he will stomp on you. <laughs> Watch out, man. Okay, and then we have a, another art piece by Simande, who made or Zimond, Simond, I guess. He made another image uh, last week as well that we showed of uh, the same character, uh, which is the, basically a bunny reaper, as he wrote. As he wrote, yeah, I know the English. Um, anyways, this is looking really, really sweet. I like this style, man. I like it a lot. I um, that it's a complete. It's a real departure from you know everyone else. A lot of other people's uh, pictures. It's very radically different, but I at the same time I do enjoy it quite a bit. <laughs> like you're looking through this, like oh look, it's a new creature. It's oh, it's it's his. This is his. Uh, this is his culture. This is his clothes. Oh look at this one. It's a rabbit and a wolf fighting. Holy crap, it's a rabbit reaper in a fire background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a nice change. Absolutely. And, uh, I definitely I like the direction you're going uh you're going with this. Uh Zymode, Zimode? Is it Zimond, I guess, or something? This is Zimode? Zymode? But uh <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah Zimode. Uh, I threw in an N there for some reason, but it's Zimode. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. If there's a, that'd be cool. If uh, you know you get killed and you get sent to an over like an Lugaru hell. Yeah, it like would a, be sweet actually with uh, a, you know a boss that is like this. Like perhaps you could teleport or something, so you have to like jump before it like instantly kills you, like chops you in half, in half when he teleports behind you and stuff like that. That would make for a good boss. That would be really awesome. <laughs> it's like you, you make this Grim Reaper. I was gonna make an old reference. I'll just drop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I like the style as well as we were talking about before. It's really like intense and uh, exa exaggerated because yeah, as you see his airs, it's very like defined, it's exaggerated, and you no, know, just you no know, intense in general. It's very, very, very awesome. Very well done. <laughs> Very thought invoking. Uh, you see this, and you it kind of makes you wonder. It always makes you wonder how how could this tie into overgrowth? Yeah. Uh, uh, it makes you think, and I, I I love it when that happens, especially with something this radical. It's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. So very very well done, Zim Zimode Zimode, not Zimond. 
as I was saying. Because <laughs> I'm a retard. Okay, but that's actually all there is to show this week. So, uh, actually, for that's for the fan art, of course. But we're going to move on to lots of other stuff. And holy crap, we're already 40 minutes in the show. And we haven't even started with all of these mods. That's crazy. <laughs> Looks like we're going to go over time a bit here. But that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I talk too much. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, okay, so first, uh, uh, or next, I should say on the list, we have last Blood Mud update, an update on the Blood Mud we showed last or the last week or the week before that, I'm not sure. And this is a mod that adds so that mm, there comes blood when you get hit, basically. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, when, I, when I first saw the Blood Mod on the last alpha, I didn't think it could really you know, get any better. It looked really good. It was really, it was really awesome. And, um, and then this guy comes and says, hey, I can make it better. And by golly, he did. Yeah. It's, def it's definitely a lot more uh, liquidy. It's, it's even more disgusting, which is a plus in my book. <laughs> Indeed. So it's, it's, really, it's really good looking. I like it. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to install it quickly so I can show everything to guys. Uh, to guys, to you guys. And girls. And girls, yeah. <laughs> Don't want to exclude anybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, let me just add in a character here. I, don't, I hope I don't have to restart the game to get the... Uh, to get the blood, blood texture stuff working. I don't think I do. Trust me, you'll know if you have the one. <laughs> it, it looks a lot different. Oh yeah, I don't need to control this. Oh yeah, scripts for some reason aren't... Oh, wait. There's blood when you hit the ground. Mm. Oh wow! This is very... Uh, this isn't the full thing, right? Maybe it is. I didn't even know that. I, I was just... Uh, I just thought you, it was still just to push the button to make the cut your throat thing. I had no idea that you could, you know, attack and, you know, have blood fly out Mortal Kombat style. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's... Uh, I mean, this is basically what this mod is. And he, it's much improved. I wasn't expecting this to be this improved before because last time it was only that when you when you hit him, he, it would like spread blood all over the place every time you hit someone. <laughs> but now it's much more, uh, you know, almost realistic. I shouldn't say realistic, perhaps, but uh, <laughs> that might be kind of a stretch. But <laughs> yeah, it's much more, you know, toned down, so it feels much more believable. Like, yeah, critical hit, blood splurs. Sweet. Yeah, you can't have, uh, you know, you can't have the sequel to Lugaru without blood. And uh, they've def definitely, you know, even in, in, even in its uh, preliminary stages, they've really, del he's really uh, delivered so far as far as, uh, as that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I think I'm going to ke keep this mod on, actually, because it's pretty cool. So to download that, just go to the link in the agenda right now if you're watching this live. I can highly recommend this actually, because it won't lag out the game as much either as it would uh, before, because, um, you know, it doesn't spawn like a billion million uh, particles and uh, overlays. Um, so yeah, sweet, sweet stuff. <laughs> well, it, it still has that blood, that throat cutting effect which sprays blood all over the place, and quite frankly, <laughs> I'm just watching the blood come out of my neck and my character, and it, it almost looks like it's making a pool on the ground, and it's making a mess. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got to see this. It, since he changed the particles as well, when you hit the comma key to kill him... Oops, I killed that guy over there now. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay, let me control this guy. <laughs> All the blood is bigger, as you might uh, be able to see. And uh, my frame rate goes down, because this is a lot of particles and stuff. But yeah. Very nice stuff. Very nice stuff. <laughs> To all you bloodthirsty people out there, this is it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, you know, it's, it's good stuff. I love it. Mm -hmm. And me being bloodthirsty, I was freaking when, Mortal, when the new Mortal Kombat game came out, I, I, I relished over all the new gore effects. and That's just me. I, I'm bloodthirsty. <laughs> yeah, I want to have that new Mortal Kombat game. I should buy it, but I need money. Is, but it looks awesome. <laughs> it's definitely worth it. 
cool. Okay, next up we have Rovert's Battle Tower Map update. So this is an update to the Battle Tower Map, um, adding lots of new stuff as you can see, improving it uh, in many ways. But it's also making it worse in some ways. Because I can't play this map basically because he has too many AIs in it, so I'm not going to attempt to. But um, I, um, yeah, I get like 10 FPS uh, or something when I am not streaming, so I'm going to get closer to 5 FPS now that I am streaming. <laughs> and I don't think I'll be able to fight this in 5 FPS. But yeah, this uh, is. It, it, yeah, go ahead. Uh, it, it's alpha software and it'll, it'll mature. I definitely noticed that. It's like when you want to have an epic fight, you can't have like, you know, even 12. AIs yet. I know they'll they'll definitely improve on that. And uh, this uh, it looks like an interesting idea for a level. I I haven't played with it myself yet, but um, it, I like uh, how the over, how the community is supporting you know overgrowth in this early of a uh, you know in the early stages. Mm -hmm. It's definitely uplifting. Indeed, indeed. And uh, this map is you know it's fun to play through. It, uh, it should go pretty quickly. Um, it's quite hard though with the battling and stuff. But you have your leg cannon, so you should be fine. <laughs> so that's uh, an update on that map we played through it last week so if you really want to see it and don't want to play it yourself uh, just check out last week's um, recording okay next up we have my cat has rabies is map so my cat has rabies made a short level okay I'm gonna read through this short level I made be warned it's very ugly since checkpoints and such don't work I just use the mouse decode for start and finish you can see the finish from the start Blah, blah 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 blah. Okay, so I have this map loader right now. I'm just going to remove this dude that I created. Hit 8, and then I'm going to press L to restart the level and play through this loader for you guys. So it starts out, uh, as I said, it's not a very beautiful map, but it's fine. I mean, it's a platforming map, so you it can be abstract. That's fine. Fine by me. How the heck are you supposed to? Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's already way beyond me. I wouldn't have been able to get up there. <laughs> yeah, what can I say? I'm pretty good at this game, and I don't think you're <laughs> supposed to go up on this one that I'm at right now. So uh, I'm just gonna do. No, I failed. Uh, how are you oh. supposed? To... Oh, I see. Yeah, someone commented on <gasps> the battle. I think Jartensen did. <laughs> He said it was nice, and that it looked uh, star, star, star cool, which is, um, you know, some word that you're not allowed to say. <laughs> <From Justin TV. laughs> and yeah, I have to agree, that looked awesome. And that's just one of the things that's going to be awesome in this game. You'll have, like, loads of stories like that. There we go. It that's a good incentive to uh, pre-order the game. Uh, those of you that haven't, you know, pre-ordered Overgrowth, there is a huge community behind, you know, the alphas and uh, coming, you know, coming out with mods for, you know, for the alphas. And every week they come out with new content. So there's, there's always a good incentive to pre-order. <laughs> those of you who aren't doing so are really missing out. I agree. Even, I agree. In, even in these early stages, it's, it's. Oh, you didn't kill him. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I don't know. think. He's down there. <laughs> I wanted to do a leg cannon, but there he's dead. And I guess this is the goal, because, you know, it's a pillow and stuff to jump down on, though I didn't. But whatever. Yeah, so short and pretty cool map, I have to say. Um, you know, in general, uh, it's very simple, short, eh, in general, okay map. Not much to say about it, nothing huge, nothing, you know, horrible. Um, if you want to just have a small map playthrough and just practice your skills, etc., I can recommend you download this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it uh, it showcases some of the gameplay elements pretty well, and uh, maybe some of the limitations, maybe what they need to improve. It's it's I consider it a pretty decent be benchmark. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nice. So next up we have another map. I think he is Anton Reels Emerald Mines map that has been released. Let's click that link right there. Oh, that's Anton Real. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, uh, so this is Anton, of course. Uh, Anton Real, who is the co-host uh, on Overgrowth Weekly, but he couldn't made it, make it today because he, he had some family stuff, I think. Okay, oh, so good he... Luck. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead, you. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine. <Go> okay. <laughs> uh, so he, he made a new map. I made a new map today, mostly just to, to try some stuff out. Sadly, I couldn't keep as many NPCs on the level as I initially wanted. There's a little bit of fighting, a little bit of climbing, and three Easter eggs to find. So, pretty cool. I'm going to play a video of this map because it's too heavy for my uh, computer. Uh, he, As he writes, um, he couldn't have as many NPCs as he wanted to, but uh, there's still too many NPCs for my computer, so here you go, the video is coming up right now. Okay, and since there's no one speaking in this video, we should be able to talk over this. Okay, I like the beginning here with the when you're coming out of the um, the woods. It's a very nice, uh, you know, start on the level. It's like just just an intro uh, kind of thing, and uh, I really like that. Though on the downside, I suppose uh, it takes a long time to get to the action when you restart the level, which is kind of boring. But if there was uh, one of those rabbits that are on the level in the woods instead, that would kind of be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do agree. It's a uh a little bit on the long side, but it's not bad. I mean, I, I don't know a lot. I, I don't know much about that. Anton's um, ma uh, mapping capabilities, but he knows what he's doing, and he knows he knows what he wanted. So, yeah. And here are three battles in the beginning. My complaint here is that there are too many enemies, like on the level. And well, first of all, I can I can stream it. I can play it at like 15 FPS, so I can play it. But the battles are very hard because I have 15 FPS, and uh, when they start dying and some of the ragdolls don't settle properly, and I get like 10 FPS instead. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, and it's not just that; it's just that three rabbits. Uh, those three rabbits always come charging at me uh, uh, all uh, at once, so I almost always die right away there in the first battle. Yeah, I guess you could say that was kind of the, maybe the aim they're going for in Overgrowth, because in Lugaru, you know, they didn't really uh, hold your hand in more than two bunny fights either, so maybe they're going to improve on it. But I, I do agree, it's a little bit brutal. <laughs> yeah, considering uh, the community right now isn't very, um, isn't very, they haven't played a lot of Overgrowth, uh, just to put it that way, so, and the combat right now is not very balanced I feel like so yeah I would probably in my levels in the future I would probably hold on off uh, hold off on the NPCs as much as possible before they are fully complete with the combat and all that kind of stuff because well you can win very easily if you're using uh, everything that you can use but if you don't use that it gets too hard instead and feels like with the uh, leg cannon and stuff being totally overpowered. <laughs> yeah, even that wolf seemed like it went down really easily. And um, that's probably something that I'll improve. Uh, I do like uh, how he's used uh, the color offset too. You know, you know, they kind of create a, a, a blending. You know, he, he made, they made the assets blend with the with the ground. And I never really, I haven't really seen the color offset tool being used yet. And that's a, a pretty good demonstration of the of the offset tool. Yeah, it's uh, oops, excuse me. It's uh, cool. I uh, I think though that the colors he has chosen. I mean, having the green ground and having the green emeralds. I mean, it's emerald, so it makes sense that it's green. But perhaps he should have chosen sapphire or just crete or something, just to give a bit of contrast. Because having green on green makes makes it feel like yeah, it's just too much green. If they, if it was gray instead, like rock or blue, perhaps I don't know. Um, I would probably like it more. But uh, in general, it's yeah, very, very, very cool. I liked the general like how we had built the map. The geometry of the level was pretty cool. I feel like. Yeah, it was uh, really, it was really interesting, and uh, kind of it reminded me of Lugaru while while I was watching that video of the playthrough, and. Um... Uh, so far, I, uh, I'm really impressed by <laughs> Anton's uh, skill so far, and I didn't know he was a. Ma I, didn't, I thought he was just made the music, but he's turns out he, he's also a mapper and not a bad one either. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, totally. Good on you, hi, Anton. Okay, so next up, we have a map by Robert. 
Um, the, and this is, uh, yeah, another map by Robert. He's the guy who made the battle tower that we were talking about before. <laughs> okay, so let me just read to you what is what, what, written about this level. I got bored and decided to try my hand at a, at a parkour map. Here are the results. It's a small in overall size, but utilizes numerous heights. Very vertical, contains one enemy, for the hell of it, and two easter eggs. Big, scenic, unimportant mountains, unstable and unsafe scaffolding. Mouse used as health, helpful indication of where to go next. Okay, so this level, let's load it up. What did I call this level? Because I'm going to talk about this probably, I hope. I hope I remember too. What was it called? Alright, parkour. I called it parkour. So people have gotten into the habit of using uh, uh, standard maps. Like this map was the Red Desert. I think this map was the Red Shards map. And uh, there were several maps this week using the Red Shards map. So I had to like convert them to you know, change their names and stuff like that. Uh, and I think we should probably <laughs> establish some kind of map code or something that like it's how you do when you release a map so just to make it easier for people to download and try people's maps out okay so I, yeah. what you were going to say I was just saying, I was like, uh, the guideline could say something along those. Like, if you're going to make a map, it's going to be like Red Shards. Don't call it Red Shards. We already have one of those. Or three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so I think they, they should give their maps names to begin with. And uh, yeah, just in general. Okay, so this level loaded up right now. Let's play through it and see what happens. Wow, uh, even just opening up, it seemed... Uh, I already it already caught my interest. I like I already like the scheme that he's using. I mean, I don't know if you can really talk much about a color scheme and some you know a, a game like this, but yeah, it already already the layout looks really good. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like uh, this level, it looks pretty interesting. I mean, he's mixing materials like the wood and the uh, kind of concrete kind of thing or the wall over there, anyways. And uh, you know, it's looking. It just works well together, and in general, the, he uses different colors for different areas of the map, so it's easy to see where you are and stuff like that. So I have to agree that it looks it looks nice, actually. Yeah, all these assets going together almost look almost look natural, like they're supposed to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's the actual, that's the first impression I got. Like, wow, this uh, looks really good. There's moss covering some of the structures. There's, uh, you know, there's wood. There's a uh, wood, you know, panels up against the stone. Uh, you know, what was this beforehand? It, this is one of those things that gets me thinking. Now, what was this beforehand? It almost looks maybe like a ruined uh, town or city or something. Or I'm not really sure. I'm just throwing ideas out there. But yeah, I, I agree. It's it's cool. It's cool. Though this is kind of abstract. So I don't think this would have been used for anything. But Whoa! Yeah, in general, very, very, like, just w well put together. It makes, it feels like it makes sense, just in general. There we go. <laughs> so th this guy uh, just kind of cranked out this map when he was bored one day. That kind of gives, gives me the impression that he's a, he's a mapper. And uh, <laughs> uh, do you know this guy? Is he a mapper, or...? Um, well, he's the one who made the uh, battle tower level. I don't know if he's actually a mapper like for anything else, or if he just likes making levels for overgrowth. But he, in any case, this level is—I mean, it has good uh, different elements on it. Uh, you know, mixes the elements quite well. And uh, yeah, actually, like it. Oops, nice bug there. <laughs> ah. I That's the uh, next up, next overgrowth up update. You need to make it. Whoa! <laughs> you need to make it so you can smash eggs or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> Random <Yeah>. thought. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, actually. Oh, I got up here. You're not supposed to be able to get up here. <laughs> Notice you uh, clipped through the rock at that one point. It's like, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh. But you pulled out of it. Yeah. Luckily. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have this one enemy here that I like to rabbit kick, so let's try to do that. Okay, he started running, he heard me. Bye bye, Mr. Rabbit. Oop. Awesome. 
Now, all we need now is to pick up the body and launch it like in Lugaro and we're set. Yeah. Throw him off that cliff. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So this level in general, like playing through it, it's uh, very, very nice. It's um, a bit short though, but yeah, it's nice. I think you should uh, perhaps uh, experiment with more different types of... Um, just some different types of ways of doing things. Like try to do... try to think like, what can I do with this? What kind of new kind of parkourish things or like platforming things can I do with this? Just in, in general. Because uh, well, it's, like it looks uh, nice, as I said, and uh, it plays nice as well. So he should totally do more of those. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so far, the, since since uh, the Overgrowth Alpha is so early in development, there aren't really a lot of assets to work with, and uh, it, it shows that he's able to take what you know what he's given and you know make something really really great out of it. And. Mm. He did a good job. Yeah, definitely. He really did. And this video playing right now is uh, Anton playing through it. And by the way, all of the videos in this um, in this one of the levels are made by Anton Real. He played through by him with his super nice computer and uh, all that kind of stuff. So many thanks to Anton for doing that. <laughs> super nice computer, not so super nice playing skills. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, but he's, he's actually so, pretty good. He just had sorry, a bad Anton. day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. I think that's actually all of the levels uh, for this time around. But we have another mod that I want to show that this a level included, of course. So let's switch back to the stream. Bra, there you go. Okay, the moon is down. The mod that Wolf Brother nine three nine three, I, uh, also known as Silverfish, and Oshis have been working on, has finally been released. We've been working f on it for a bit more than a month now, and um, yeah, as you can see in this promotional picture made by Wolf Brother, uh, it includes stealth and combat. So this is a map with. Um, yeah, a couple, a few enemies with it in it, and you know, a bit of a town, I suppose you could call it. And your goal is to like get into a room, and you can do it by being stealthy and just sneaking past the enemies, or you can just kill them all if you want to do that. And uh, we also have a video here of a playthrough of The Moon Is Down, and uh, I think I'm going to play that video for you guys right now. Let's lower the sound there as well. Okay, so there you go. And as I said, this is made by Anton as well. So, thanks Anton for doing this. Okay, so this uh, mod, uh, it's something, as I said, we've been working on for like a month or so. It's uh, basically like, it feels like... It's like a test mod. We wanted to do something together, but we weren't sure like what we were supposed to do, so we just came up with something and did it, just to get something out there. And we have had a lot of technical issues with this, uh, especially when it comes to optimization. Like, this engine is unoptimized right now, and this set is very demanding, the old China asset set that we're using, made by Marcus. So we had to make a lot of compromises when it comes to, you know, the amount of objects, etc, etc, and uh, we had to do some decals and stuff like that to, you know, spice it up a little bit, uh, at least. So, well, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's like, uh, <laughs> I sound like a broken record, but <laughs> it's like, oh, just, um, it's still an alpha state, and it'll definitely improve on the engine, you know, as time goes on, and... That's another thing I look forward to. I look forward to see how well they optimize it. Yeah, totally. So people are asking what uh, is changing the script for this mod. Uh, and uh, the changes are that the AI is deaf, for starters, because I found that I don't like how the AI can hear through walls right now. It's just very confusing. If you're sneaking outside of a building, he will be able to easily hear you through the wall and just run out and, you know, attack you. I didn't like that, so made the AI deaf quite simply, so it makes it easier to sneak on this level. Okay, next up, AI can use pathfinding when on, on patrol, which is a thing that I think people might be want to use in their month, because right now when the AI is on patrol, 
they don't use the pathfinding, they just go from point to point and don't mind, like, they don't care if there's a wall between them and the point, they will just walk straight into the wall. So that's not very cool, so we made it so that they use the pathfinding when they're not in combat as well as when they are in combat. But that's not using this mod, because um, the um, uh, the thing that that they're using to create the pathfinding isn't very accurate. So, for example, they couldn't walk inside of the big building you saw there, and they thought that they couldn't walk under the tree in that yard, yard in that yard there. And we just uh, didn't have enough time to make uh, to make it work, so we had to just uh, skip using the pathfinding and just get the mod out there. And uh, then we have made it so that the AI returns to patrolling when uh, when uh, they can't find the player. They didn't do that before. And ragdolls settle more easily because um, well, there was a problem where ragdolls wouldn't settle for like a minute or more, so we just made them settle uh, more easily. We just changed the number up, basically. I can see what that would cause. That would probably cause quite a bit of lag, you know, not, you know, notwithstanding uh, the, this artist, this asset, excuse me, the assets that are already demanding by themselves. Yeah, exactly. We wanted to do as much as possible to make sure that it's, you know, lag-free. So there you have the U Win decal there, and of course the Whaleman decal uh, with a pink beard, which is oh almost yeah kind of a thing. <laughs> it's your price, <laughs> and uh, that's the level. So uh, yeah, I'll download it, check it out. We put a lot of work into this. You may need a pretty good computer though. So if you know that you're having kind of low FPS uh, playing it right now, you sh probably won't be able to play this on a good FPS. But in the future we want to make more optimized mods, we're probably going to do a few more uh, abstract maps if we do make uh, more maps in the future, which I hope we will. Just to make it more playable and keep it more accessible for people. But yeah, that's the moon is down. Awesome. Well, really good looking map so far. and uh, look, I, uh, I want to see what you guys uh, do with it, if you go forward with it. And yeah, the, this is actually the final version of the map. We've like left this map now. We're done with it since we didn't get any complaints from people not being able to play it, etc. So, yeah, we feel like we're done with, with it for now. <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mission accomplished. Okay, so that's all of the community stuff for this week. But I want to like tell you guys about when you're making maps. Okay, so when you're making maps, uh, first off, if you can, please use the for form upload. Okay, because it's very annoying when I have to go to page and wait for, <laughs> wait for you know the download. Like you need to wait for thirty sec for thirty seconds before you can download this map because you want as many people as possible to be able to play your maps. Okay, so use the form upload. Uh, that's the first thing I want to tell you guys. Uh, second thing, don't replace one of the current maps. You should uh, instead rename your map if possible. If you don't know how, I know some people have been having trouble with that. No, come to the IRC. We can probably like help you with that if you're having trouble, and uh, try to figure it out. But it's uh, actually quite annoying, and it's uh, stopping people from being able to play your level. Also, make sure that it works on a clean install. Like, take your map, take it on another computer, and install Overgrowth on it, or just reinstall Overgrowth on your own computer, remove everything, and put your map in there again and see if it works. If it works, then it will probably work on everyone else's as well. Because um, on some of the levels, I didn't, for example, have the skies, I think, or the skies had the wrong names or something, and if I didn't know how to fix that, well, then people are going to have a hard time playing the level. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what else? Yeah, you can compile the shadows with the map, especially if you have a big map, this is a good idea, but in general it saves time for the guys who can play it. You can compile the shadows uh, with the map, okay, and then you can go into your uh, Overgrowth folder and then data, uh, textures, and then terrain, I think, is it? No, shadow maps. And right here you see you have like a thousands and thousands of images. So what you do is... Um, you, for example, in the moon is down, we have uh, included the shadow maps for the moon is down. So what you do, you just go down to your level name. Oh fuck, my phone is ringing. Let's turn this phone off. <laughs> 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 Sorry for... Nice. <laughs> Sorry for throwing down the F-bomb right there, but... Uh, 
<laughs> I hope you you'll be fine. Okay, so here we go. The moon is down. It starts here. The moon is down zero, and then you just go down until you get to the moon is down. The last one is for. 2,481. Just select all of those, and you put those in a folder called, you know, you know, data, textures, shadow maps, or you just put them, you know, in the right position. You know what to do with this. Okay. Uh, so you just include that in the mod, and people won't have to calculate their shadows. Save some time, and you know, if they don't have good enough computers, like me, I can't calculate shadows for all the maps. So, yeah, it'll just improve the experience for people. Yeah, definitely, because uh, shadows uh, yeah, right now anyway they take a very long time to compute. Uh, I'm not, I don't even know about ambient occlusion. I don't know if anybody that uses that, but it takes a very long time to compute. Yeah. And I do agree, it would take it would be probably a lot easier for the end user if you did all that for them. Indeed, it's all about the, it's all about the end user. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then also another thing you can do if you want to have navigation in your map, if you want the AI not to run down ledges as in the see the play, for instance, you can calculate the um, the pathfinding, and you do that by going to the pathfinding tab in the editor, and then you just click calculate pathfinding, and then you click like save nav mesh, I think it's called actually in there, and then you get a nav map, a nav file like this in your levels folder, the same folder that your level is in. So you just take that and uh, ship that with the, with the map as well. And uh, the user won't have to calculate that. So those are a few of the things you can do to uh, help the user like get a better experience with your map. Um, yeah, and if you don't know, if you don't have like several computers or something, you just send the map to someone just, and let them test it. I would gladly test your map. If, if you find me on IRC and you're like, I have this map, I want you to like just make sure that it works on everyone else's computers. And just send it to me and I can like, test it out. And if it doesn't work, I can help you with it. So, <laughs> yeah, I just want maps to be more. I want you guys to make more maps so I can show you guys more maps on Orgoth Weekly and play more maps because... Uh, yeah, we're getting a lot of maps, and I think we can get even more maps and uh, even better experience for you know the end user. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely create more content. More content I mean equals you know more incentive to pre-order. And if you don't, if we don't have any content, we're not going to have an overgrowth weekly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, th thanks for making all uh, all of those levels, and I hope you listen to what I say and uh, use it. Uh, yeah, that's bit, that's the end of my little rant there, anyways. <laughs> and that's the end of this show as well. So, uh, as usual, if you're on uh, Justin TV, just click the uh, follow button to receive, you know, email updates whenever I go live. Uh, and as usual, we go live on Sundays at uh, let's see what it says up here. Okay, it doesn't say anything. Well, it's nine o'clock UTC plus two, anyways. That's Central European time, I'm pretty sure. Nine o'clock PM. <laughs> that is twenty one oh oh. Yeah, it's like two. It was two o'clock over here. Two o'clock in the afternoon. So <laughs> yeah, Dep depends where you're at. <laughs> exactly, it depends. So go here. Just check the countdown at the top of the page. It will show when uh, when we're going to go live. So, anyways, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Hugs and kisses, man. Bye bye. See you, man.